Ali Sheedy stars in Single Drunk Female on Freeform. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. Ali, such a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you um, for having me. Of course. Uh, I wanted to start with your kind of origins with the show, particularly when you first got that first script or however many scripts you saw, what was it about this series' treatment of sobriety and recovery that really kind of drew you to the project? Because it's so kind of, it's funny, but it's also very delicate and, and smart. Um, the script that I saw was the script for the pilot. Um, I fell in love with Carol's character right away. And the, the, the thing for me really was the, the mother-daughter relationship. Um, I, I know the context is sobriety and all this, but for me, it was basically this very complicated dynamic between the mother and daughter. Uh, that, was, that was what just pulled me in right away. Yeah, let's uh, let's talk about that. Uh, but first, let's talk about Carol, because I think you know what's so interesting about your character is, I, ha I have a very hard time kind of encapsulating her with one or two words, like how to describe Carol. She's so complicated and therefore, you know, really exciting and so fun to watch. So I just wanted to get you know kind of your take on you know how do you describe Carol when people ask you know what is this character like because she's so rich. Um, she's, uh, she's, um, some, all right, as Carol, um, I raised this kid, um, I had a very long marriage with my husband, he went through a very long sickness, um, and died, uh, and I was the caretaker, um, and in the meantime, or during the entire thing, Sam, my daughter, was just MIA. Um, in New York and drinking and this and that and the other thing. So um, I've gotten to the point where I, it's two, and a half, two years, two and a half years since he died, um, just getting a life for myself, you know, with my house and figuring it out and going through that whole process. And then she blows up her life. She's a complete disaster. And after having been completely just missing, suddenly comes back into my life and I'm, I guess, supposed to take care of her. Um, and I'm, uh, I don't want my life to be about her, you know? So it's, it is a really complicated dynamic. I don't trust that she's gonna stop drinking. I don't know what she was doing. I don't believe in the alcoholic thing. I think she just, was an idiot and had a problem and ruined her life. And now she's back living with me and it's a little bit pathetic. And um, I gotta figure out how to deal with this kid. So, and she's, you know, almost 30. So that's where, that's where Carol's at. Yeah, and we do, we kind of meet Carol, you know, we have a, a really funny scene where Carol picks Sam up from rehab, but you know, Sam immediately gets herself into trouble in the first episode again. And we really meet Carol at a breaking point, I think, with Sam. So I wanted to ask you, you know, because that's, that's a scene early on in the series in the very first episode, how much of the characters kind of their journeys together and their, their history did you know to kind of tap into, you know, Carol's frustration that, you know, this is kind of the last, this is the last straw? Well, when we shot the pilot, um, it was just the, Sophia and I uh, had some rehearsal with um, Jenny Connor and Leslie Headland and Simone Finch, we were all in Chicago, um, talking through, you know, what was this history? But it's, you know, the writing in the show is really good. It's really on point, as far as I'm concerned, especially uh, between Carol and Sam. So there was so much there uh, that it was, it was, um, it wasn't really an intellectual exercise about, well, let's talk about, you know, this happened, that happened. I mean, it's there on the page. So Sophia and I started messing with each other. I really adore her and the complications, um, and the <sighs> friction, uh, we were, it came up for both of us right away. So it, it, um, I don't know why it, it always felt like, um, I felt like I'd known Sophia for some reason my whole life, even though I hadn't, there's a level of comfort. Um, and we both brought in this um, complicated thing. Uh, and then when, it, when we went in to do the series, that was, th the writing kept um, 
along that same path, if that makes sense. So the relationship um, during the show, it, it progresses, but by inches, you know, which I really like. There's nothing neat. There's nothing tidy. It's very messy. Um, and at the end of the first season, um, they're just making a tiny step forward, but so easily they're going to take some steps backwards. Um, that's to me, the way things really happen. So uh, it just something very authentic in there. Yeah, I wanted to ask you more about working with Sophia, especially because what's so unique about this series, you know, number one, the mother daughter relationship is so complex, as you're saying, but also over the course of 10 episodes, you know, it's it, we're moving across a lot of time. It's the first year of Sam's sobriety. Right. So how do you kind of track? Is it I, I imagine it's challenging, but also really exciting to get a script and say, okay, you know, we're six months from where we started or we're three months after the last episode. So to kind of like track those emotional changes over the course of what's a year in time, you know, is it exciting? Is that, is that an interesting part of, part of the challenge of, of the role? It's a, it, yes, but as far as I'm going to talk again, speak again as for Carol, um, I know in the in the AA 12 step thing, it's like the the amount of days is a big deal, 90 days, six months, a year. For Carol, not so much, right? I'm not tracking this as far as how long has she been sober at all. Mm -hmm. I'm going by um what I have to deal with with her. Just the fact that she, okay, she hasn't been drinking. I don't trust her necessarily, the choices that she makes. Um you know, super, super great. There's an episode in there where she says, I'm, you know, 90 days. I got 30 days. Great. You know, I got, she's telling me the number of days. To me, it's not that. It's an entire life of, you know, what we've lived through. So it's great that she can go to her group and they make a big deal about how much time that is. But for me, it's years and years and years of stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was wonderful as the scripts came in. Um, for me, it wasn't, I wasn't tracking how long she's been sober because for Carol, that's just not the issue. I was just trying to figure out, um, okay, she's been living with me now for a month. She's been living with me for, you know, 90 days, uh, three months or whatever it is. Okay, six months, we're here. And I was taking um, a lot of it off of, Sophia, who is very delicately and in a very complicated way, moving her character along inch by inch by inch. So it's in the writing, but it's also in what Sophia was doing um, that I was playing off of. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and it is so, it's fun to watch how Sam kind of hampers Carol's relationship with Bob, because we see Carol has a boyfriend from early on in the season and the way that Sam kind of is complicating Carol's privacy and alone time. And, um, you know, Carol is really just interested in, you know, trying to reclaim her life after, you know, as you said, being a caregiver. So I wanted to ask you about, first, just about Bob. What do you think makes Bob such a good match for Carol? Um, and just the fun of working with Ian Gomez, because the characters are so fun to, to watch together. Um, yeah, I love Ian. We really, we had a really fun time together. I feel very relaxed with him playing back and forth. Um, I don't know. I think, I think um, Ian's playing a character that's very grounded. Um, for Carol, I think it's um, still, it's trying to figure out, I don't know, you know, it's not that long since my husband died. Let's try to figure this out. I'm not really sure. So um, that relationship has lots of question marks for me as Carol as in, I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. Um, and I like that because I don't know what I'm doing with my kid. I don't know what I'm doing exactly with this man. Um, not really sure how all these pieces are gonna fit together. And Carol's a control freak. So that, I like that uncertainty. I don't want anything to be set in stone. I think it should all be fluid and it is fluid in the writing. We don't really know what's going on or what's going to happen. Um, that works for me with this, with this character who I think doesn't want anyone making decisions for her ever. Yeah, that's, that's a great point because there are a few episodes where Bob is really pushing 
you know, I don't even think he realizes, but he's kind of pushing Carol to do things or make decisions that she probably didn't want to do. So I wanted to ask you about two of those. The first is that spiritual book club scene where she doesn't want to tell people, you know, what's really going on with Sam and he kind of nudges her to, to do so. And it's, you know, it's very, you know, it's emotional for Carol, but the way you play it is also just hilarious. I mean, it's a great scene. So can you talk about, you know, these kind of moments where you get to, to kind of play bigger, you know, she starts smashing, you know, appetite, you know, hors d'oeuvres and it's, it, it's really interesting and I imagine a really fun, fun scene to play, but there's emotional work uh, to do too. Well, I feel in that scene, the book club scene, I feel really pushed against the wall. I mean, the social worker, the probation officer is there and then what, he's brought her into the group um, I don't want to talk about all of this, but then I feel like, you know, I can't, I, I just can't with that. So throw it out there. Okay. This is what's happening. And you know what? Yeah, I'm angry. And you know what? Yeah. I spent hours putting these snacks together, the hors d'oeuvres. I'm just going to throw them all on the floor. I've had it, you know, and that's, that's what was happening in that scene. Um, I, I don't want him to um, say anything to me about the way that I am being a mother to my kid, period. Uh, so anytime that he steps into that territory, I feel really uh, very defensive about it. Right, and that's exactly where I wanted to go next is that episode where Carol finds out that he's given Sam $100 for her trip to New York and that really kind of, you know, we, we know why Carol's upset. And then Carol really realizes later that, oh, yeah, you're, you're kind of stepping into a role that my husband used to play. And you really get to have that moment of grief. So I just wanted to ask you about, again, in terms of the tone of the series, you know, you get these kind of big and funny moments, but you also get to really kind of dig deep and, and portray grief. So I just wanted to ask you about the range and, and navigating the tone of the show. Yeah, I think it's, I think Carol is both ha has, um, does have a lot of grief, has a lot of depth of emotion, uh, a lot of anger, um, a lot of regret, um, you know, just a, a not wanting to be controlled, not wanting anybody in my space, not wanting one, anybody to step over a line. I mean, I really have spent a long time taking care of people and I don't want to take care of anybody else. But at the same time, right now, even though underneath, of course, the Sam thing is very complicated about my kid. Um, I just don't want to be asked to do too much or pushed to do too much. Do you know what I mean? So when he does that, it makes me really angry. Uh, and I don't think Carol has, um, you know, she's got the book club. I, she, there's not the self-awareness to really be able, usually to be able to talk these things through. There's just immediate reaction. Um, that's how she is. So, you know, sometimes that comes in uh, uh, the scene, uh, uh, the context within the context of a kind of funny scene, the book club, it's just right on the edge of being farce, right? But the um, scene where he has given her money, I mean, you know, no. So that one has a different context around it, but the impulse in the scenes are, is it, it's similar. Yeah, yeah. And what you're saying about, you know, how Carol responds to people versus when she's proactive is really interesting because we do see in her own way how Carol cares for Sam, especially when people aren't kind of looking, when, when she's not being asked right. for that. Um, you know, when Sam's struggling to write or when Sam is really excited about the job in New York and Carol gets very concerned. So I love those moments. And, I, you know, I just want to ask you about playing them. Love the moments where Carol, in her own way, does show you know, her concern for Sam, especially when people aren't kind of putting that on her when mm -hmm. she gets to choose. So just right. talk about, you know, like the, like the scene opposite Sam's sponsor, like, you know, Carol does get very proactive when, you know, when she feels like she, she has a chance to, to show, you know, care. So the sponsor scene, um, I don't want my daughter to go to New York because it's, I think it's a terrible idea because she might drink there. Uh, I, 
can't really broach that with her. I think we kind of try to do a little bit. Um, so who can I go to? You know, the person that she keeps saying is the, you know, the person who's helping her be sober. Um, for me, playing Carol, for Carol, uh, I have jealousy about the sponsor. I have competition with the sponsor. Um, I don't really know what's going on there with that relationship. I'm going to, it's a wait and see. It's a trial period for me. Um, but if she's, if Sam is going to go on and on about, you know, what a great sponsor she has and this and that, fine. I'm going to go and talk to her, who, Olivia, who I also know from her, you know, radio show and her books and her whole thing. Um, and just say, hey, listen, like I'm the mother. So I'm basically number one and you aren't. Um, and I'm going to tell you that this is what you need to do. You need to tell her she can't tell Sam she can't go to New York. And then the sponsor is not, um, she's got her own line there in the sand, which I think, which I uh, found somewhat enraging. Um, as Carol, not understanding how the whole thing works. So uh, I, I just feel during the entire season, which I love, there's, I feel like they're just, there's just people sort of trying to, you know, box me in, they're crossing my lines. Um, I need to figure this out for myself and I want to be the one who's in control and makes decisions. And there's nothing in the entire season that really allows me to do that. So it's a constant state of, um, uh, you know, <laughs> this. I'm just ready for someone to do or say the wrong thing, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and two last questions I want to ask you kind of looking forward because the show has been renewed for a second season. Congratulations yes. on that. Thank you. I'm um, so happy. Yeah, me too. I um, can't wait to see where the characters go. Um, so the first question is, there's a really great scene in the second to last episode where Sam and Carol take a drive. Carol wants to spread her husband, her late husband's ashes, which Sam doesn't know about. Um, and it really does feel to me anyway, like a turning point for the two characters, even though, you know, they're kind of in their same, you know, in their same kind of positions and the way they interact with each other, but it does feel like a kind of turning point. So I wanted to ask you, you know, where do you hope the relationship will go in season two? Because it's always so rich and, and complicated, but you know, how is it going to evolve and change, do you think, or, or will it change that much? Well, it's, I, mm, it's going to be complicated because it, it's kind of a turning point, but the thing I love about that scene is it, that scene could have been a turning point, but because of the relationship, it's not quite a turning point. So she wants to talk to me about something while well, I have my agenda. My agenda is, um, without telling you, we're going to spread dad's ashes. Um, and you can talk to me. Obviously, there's something really important you want to talk to me about, but my importance is going to take priority. And then she starts doing that amends thing. And she starts going in a direction that I really don't like. So I'm going to take it back. You know, it's got to be about me. I have my thing to say. And I pretty much undermine her in that scene, even though um, at the end, I love the scene because it's so complicated. Even at the end, I just, I am saying to her, okay, look, you can stay in the house. Um, it's a teeny bit of, of um, subconscious acknowledgement that she's giving me something, I'm gonna give her something, but basically on the surface of it, um, I don't want her to control that scene. So uh, it's supposed to be her big amends scene. I don't know that, but I can tell sort of as it's going on. And my feeling is you don't get to control this moment. Actually, it's going to be me. So, right. So that's the relationship. And it, you know, it, it's changed so that we can actually have a walk and go through a few things. But um, there's just so much ground to cover with these two. Um, and no matter how, far along Sam goes with all of the self-reflection and the spiritual this and da, da 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 Carol's got her own thing going on. I'm not on the same path that she's on. Um, so I'm not, you know, the friction is, is something that's just, it's gonna, it's just there. Yeah, um, I can't wait to see where the characters go next season. I'm sure that friction will still be there. Um, oh yeah. But, but Ali Sheedy, congratulations on the first season and thanks so much for talking to Gold Derby today. Thank you so much, David. It was really nice to meet you.